You want to make a Minecraft server in 1.21 to play it with your friends. Well, in this video, we're going to show you exactly how to do that, going over every single step of how to make a Minecraft server for the 1.21 version and start playing it with your friends. But I do want to mention that the server we're starting in this video is not a 24-hour server. It's only going to be up and running when your computer is up and running. Plus, it is hosted on your own computer's resources, meaning you're going to need a pretty good computer in order to run a Minecraft server and play Minecraft at the same time. On top of all that, it uses your own internet connection. So not only do you need a good high-speed internet connection, you also have to worry about things like DDoSing you and anyone who gets the IP address of the server can figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates so it's important to only give this server out to your friends your family people you trust now if you're okay with that awesome but if you're not we have a solution for you and that solution is our company simple game hosting go to the first link in the description down below the breakdown.xyz slash simple to start a minecraft server in under five minutes this video is over 15 minutes long at simple game hosting by the time the video is over you would be playing on your server on top of that simple game hosting makes the entire process easy Easy. Once you've got your server, it's easy to add mods or plugins, or even add mod packs to your server with our one-click mod pack installer and truly customize your server any way that you want. Plus, there's expert live chat support there. If you've got a question about your server, they are there to help and help out with anything in regards to your server. Plus, on top of that, at Simple Game Hosting, you get high-quality hardware that's meant to run Minecraft servers efficiently and super, super well, and you don't have to worry about security or anything like that. You just get the IP address of the server and join it, or customize the server how you want, and then join the server. So, go check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below. The break .xyz slash simple and start your Minecraft server in just a few minutes the simple way. But what if you don't want to use simple game hosting? Well, that's perfectly fine. We're going to show you how to make a Minecraft server on your own computer starting right now. First things first, go to this link. It's the second link in the description down below. The video you're watching now will be up here at the top. Unless the newer Minecraft version's out, then it will be that one, and this one will have been replaced up there. But once you're here, go ahead and scroll down, and what you want to do is click on the download button. Now, this is a text guide on making a Minecraft server. It's very, very in-depth and worth checking out if you prefer text guides. But I'm guessing you don't because you search for a video. So let's go ahead and click on the download Minecraft button here. Let's go to Minecraft's official download page. On this page, we can see download Minecraft underscore server 1.21.jar. So this is what we want. We're going to go ahead and click on the Minecraft underscore server dot jar here. And when we do, the server jar is going to open up and we want to go ahead and save that. Now, you may not need to keep or save it, but if you do, it's 100% safe too. This is Minecraft's official website that we're downloading this from. Now, what we want to do is go ahead and minimize our browser and make a new folder on our desktop. So that's going to be right click, new folder, and name it Minecraft 1.21 server because that's what we're doing. We're making a Minecraft 1.21 server and then open this up. Then what we want to do is go ahead and find the file we downloaded, that server.jar. Now for me, I know that's going to be in my downloads folder here, but for you, it's wherever files are downloaded to. Take this and drag it into the folder that you made on your desktop, right like so. So now when you open up that folder on your desktop, you've got the server.jar in it. Now at this point, you should be able to double click this and some files will generate. But if they don't, I've got a solution. Don't worry, we've got you covered. In the description down below, there is this, which is Java 21. Java 21 is new and required for Minecraft 1.21. So if you've been able to run a server or open mods in the past and are suddenly struggling, this is why you need Java 21 in order for Minecraft to work and be able to get opening server and mod files and all that stuff. So you want to make sure that you're grabbing this from the description down below. There's an in-depth guide on getting it, but it's super simple. You basically just click here and then make sure you're downloading the Windows version for the x64 installer and then install it like any other program. Once you've got Java though, you may need to run the jar fix as well. And what this is going to do is take the jar files on your computer and link them back to Java, making sure that when you double click on that server.jar like we did, it actually opens and it actually works. If you double click the server.jar and you have Java and it doesn't work, it's because you need to run the jar fix. So that's in the description as well. So nevertheless, we can now go ahead and Double click that server.jar if you couldn't before and get these files and folders. Now your server's not ready yet because we need to open this eula.txt file. When you open this up, you can see the Minecraft EULA here. And assuming you agree to it, change EULA equals false to EULA equals true. T-R-U-E, exactly like that. Then click File, Save, and there you go. You have now saved the Minecraft EULA. You've agreed to it. And watch this. When you double-click the server.jar, your server is going to start. Now, at this moment, you're the only person that can join your server. Your friends can't. And we're going to show you how to port forward, how to allow your friends to join, all of that stuff. But first, let's make sure you can join it. So what we're going to do is open up Minecraft 1.21 and join this server just using a local connection just to make sure it can be joined by you. So here we are. The server is online. Minecraft is open and we can go into multiplayer and we can direct connect. You can also add this server. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to name this server local connection because, well, it is a local connection. And then for the server address, we're going to use localhost. Localhost all together, all one word, exactly 
exactly like that. Then go ahead and click done, and after a few seconds it will resolve and there it is. When we double click on this, we'll see us pop in here on the left hand side in the server console. There it is, Nick's Games has joined the server, that's my username, and we're in game. Our server is now online. The first thing I recommend doing, even before allowing your friends to join, is giving yourself op on the server. This will allow you to kick people, go into creative, all that stuff. To do that, come over here to the server console and simply type op and then your username, right like so, and then you'll see a message confirming the operator setting in game. And uh, there you have it. You're online on your server, you're op, things are awesome but you want your friends to join. And I think that's fair. That's what a Minecraft server is made for. So let's go ahead and let our friends join this server by port forwarding. First things first, we want to go ahead and disconnect here and close out of Minecraft. Then we want to stop our server. To properly stop your server, come over here to the server's console and type stop, right like so, and hit enter. It's then going to shut this down right like that. And there you go. It is now shut down properly. And now what we want to do is open up the start menu. And in the start menu, we want to search for CMD, command prompt, right like so, and open that up. And then in the command prompt, we want to type IP, COM, FIG, IP config, all one word, exactly like that, and hit enter. This is going to give us a bunch of information, most of which we don't need, but we do need two things from this. One is our IPv4 address. So let me go ahead and type that out here, IPv4, and we can see right here it is, IPv4 address, in my case, that's 192.168.1.2. Then we also need our default gateway. Now, we have two default gateways here, and what we want to do is, if I can spell correctly, get the one that's just numbers. So as you can see, next to default gateway, there's one that's numbers and letters here. Kind of confusing. We don't want that one. We want the one that's under it. It's very simple. 192.168.1.1 in my case. For you, it could be anything. It could be 10.1 or whatever. Whatever your default gateway is here, that's what we want. But we want the simple one that's under the one that's, you know, very complicated. We want this one that's just numbers. So 192.168.1.1, right like so. So now what we want to do is close out of this and we want to open up our router. How do we do that? Well, we want to copy this default gateway here and go into a web browser. And up here at the top where you would normally type in simplegamehosting.com, youtube.com, thebreakdown.xyz, you want to go ahead and type in that default gateway. So 192.168.1.1 in my case, it could be something different for you. Hit enter and then you're going to get some sort of a login box. Now mine just pops in from the top. Yours may be an actual login box on the screen. It could be a pop-up. Who knows what it is, but you'll get some sort of login box. What do you enter in here? Well, your router's username and password, and unfortunately, that is different than your Wi-Fi password. And here's a guide in the description on how to find your router username and password. Usually, you start with method one, you work all the way through method five. Most people find it by method three, so you don't have to worry about you know contacting your ISP or doing anything like that. Just go through these methods, and then you'll be able to log into your router. I'm gonna go ahead and log into mine, and I'll see you once I've logged in. And once we're logged in like this, what we want to do is port forward. Now, this is different for every router, and I'm gonna be giving you the common terms that you can expect to see when port forwarding so you can find it in your router but of course we do have an in-depth guide on this as well and I want to mention because this video up here at the top is so valuable because while I'm going to be showing you this on my router a Netgear router it's the only one I have but there are tons of routers out there and this video is one that goes through all the most popular routers that are out there today it goes through how to port forward on them all of that stuff and is worth checking out it gives you terms and everything even if your specific router is not in that video you'll pick up a lot of things to look for nevertheless on my router it's in advanced and then it's in advanced again and then it's in port forwarding slash port triggering now, for you, it might be in apps and gaming. It might be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding, NAT gaming, NAT gaming. It could be in advanced, advanced again, administration, security, or firewall. It could be in a you know NAT security tab, a gaming security tab. That's rare, but I've seen it in apps and gaming as well. It's a very, very popular look for. Once you're in there, what you're looking for is port forwarding of some sort. So in my case, right here is port forwarding. For you, it may be called single port forwarding. It might be called port forwarding slash port triggering. But once you find it, you want to go ahead and add a new port forward. For me, that's by clicking add custom service. You may have a big list of empty boxes. That's the case. Go with the first one and then port forward on that and then save it and you're good to go. Just that first line of empty boxes. But here we are. This is my port forward. Now for the service name or ID, what you want to do is enter in Minecraft because this is for a Minecraft server. This is just so you can identify what the port forward is for. For the protocol, we want to select TCP slash UDP or UDP slash TCP or the word both. It literally could be the word both. So if that's the case, go ahead and select that. Otherwise, select TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP. And if you can't select both for whatever reason, do this twice, leaving all the other info the same 
same, once for TCP, and then once for UDP. Now, for anything mentioning the word port, external port, internal port, first port, second port, outside port, inside port, what we want to do is enter in here 25565, right like so. So external port, hey, that's the word port, 25565. Internal port, Nick said, anytime I see the word port, you want to enter in 25565. So that's what we're going to do. Now, for our internal IP address, this is going to be that IPv4 address we found earlier. So 192.168.1.2 in my case, or whatever your IPv4 address is. You may not have the option to enter this though. It might ask you for a device instead. And if that's the case, just select the device you're making the Minecraft server on. It's going to be whatever name that shows up on your internet network for that device. So go ahead and select that there. Once you've got it, go ahead and click save, apply. But some of you will need an outside or external IP address for your port forward. And luckily, if you do, everyone who's watching this video does because that's how your friends will join as well. So in the description down below, we have a link to this, which is what's my IP address. Now, all you can see here is 4.3, but you can also see the info someone can get from your IP, which is your region, your city, and your latitude and longitude coordinates. So it's super important to keep this private. So that's only meant for your friends and family. And one of the benefits of simple game hosting is not having to release that info. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and click on this to copy it. And that'll copy the IP address for us. And then once we've got that, we can go ahead and go back to our router if we needed it here, paste it in, we're good to go. Otherwise, it's time to join our server because port forwarding is finished. To do that, we want to go ahead and start the server. You can always start the server by double clicking on that server.jar there, and we want to launch up Minecraft. So here we are with the server online again and Minecraft open again. This time we're going to go to multiplayer just like we did before. We're going to click proceed and we're going to add a server. This time we're going to name the server public IP because that's what we're going to be using to join the server here, and we're going to paste our public IP. Now you can only see 4.3 again, just so you know it's the same one we used earlier, but I don't want to release that info to everybody just like you shouldn't want to, so dot is all you can see just to confirm. Then click done, and after a few seconds, it will load right like so. Public IP, right there it is, and we can double click and join it. Now, I know this is going to work because my ISP actually allows me to connect back to myself, which is what you're doing when you use this. You can see on the left-hand side, players, Nick's games, that's me, is online. But if you can't connect to your server via the public IP, 100%, that's fine, no big deal, because your friends are the only people that have to join using your public IP. So as long as your friends can join using your public IP, you're good to go. You can join using that local host connection. Now, it is worth noting that if your friends can't join after the port forward, we do have a guide in the description down below that can help you out. It's specifically how to allow Java through your Windows Defender firewall. This is commonly the issue that people run into whenever they port forward for a Minecraft server and their friends can't join. This guide goes through everything you need to know to allow Java through and allow your friends to join the server. We've also got how to fix a broken Minecraft server, which is 20 minutes of fixing different Minecraft server issues along the way and getting those resolved for you. If you're adminning a server, which you are now, it's worth checking that out even if you're not having issues now because in the future you might. And if you do, this is here to help and will help you fix any of those issues. Lastly, if your server's crashing, you're running out of RAM on your server, this guide will help you add more RAM to your server and this goes through everything you need to know to get that done. So there you have it. You now have a Minecraft 1.21 server. You can now play on it with your friends and if you've got any questions, let us know in the comments section down below. And if you want to start a server as quick and simple as possible, that's where Simple Game Coasting comes in. Again, first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash simple. Nevertheless, enjoy your brand new Minecraft server, and we will see you in the next video. I am out. Peace.